All right, hello, welcome back to the channel. Pumped to have you here and happy holidays. So really, really excited to be announcing here the Slavic Studio. This is an all-encompassing area here for all of our new filming videography. We're really excited to show you the studio, what we've put into it. We've gotten many uh, gifts from people. We've gotten other special things that we've added and uh, just really, really pumped to be able to have built this studio out. Uh, you know, continuing to reinvest uh, into this business and really build the studio out for, for all of you and who will watch the content. But really this is all about bringing the most engaging content in the flight simulation community associated to real world avionics, real world proficiency and how you apply that in the comfort of your own home through our products. So uh, really excited for this live studio. Going to be walking through some more modular plates as well. Uh, so we did a few modular panels in the past couple months. Going to walk through some of those modular panels. And uh, once again, can't thank enough our video sponsor for this, this video, no, 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 then Pilot Edge. So uh, Pilot Edge, really awesome uh, group over there. Keith just does an amazing job. If you know about Pilot Edge, fantastic. Share with all of your pilot friends. If you don't know about Pilot Edge, get on Pilot Edge. It is fantastic training to really become mastered in your radio calls, your proficiency with radio calls, whether it's VFR, whether it's instrument, and it's all about really when I say kind of taking out the stress of flying, taking out the dynamics of flying, really, uh, really being able to do these things in the comfort of your own home, right? And so if you're just starting off in your private pilot certificate journey, it's a great uh, way to be able to hook up a, an inexpensive laptop, get a simulator, get a yoke and throttle, get kind of just the basics and start off with Pilot Edge and start off in their, in their really prescribed VFR course series. They have uh, multiple different, what they're called CAT ratings within their system. They got about 10 in the VFR. Covers everything from ground calls uh, to calling the tower for takeoff clearance to even getting a flight following and just all these things. And so you can really master all of these things before you ever take your first lesson flying an airplane. And so highly, highly recommend starting off with their month subscription and, and going from there. But Pilot Edge is an awesome service. I actually used it in my training uh, regimen when I uh, when I became a pilot and I'm actually going to start using it now here as I gain my instrument rating. So really, really excited about that. So definitely check out Pilot Edge. Keith, the whole team does a great job. A lot of different, uh, I'll call it regional uh, radar ATC coverage areas. And you're talking to a real person, right? Real controllers who are really nailing in the phraseology. And if you're not doing well in the phraseology, they'll help you to really get to where you need to be in terms of your phraseology. So it's, uh, it's really good. So check out Pilot Edge. Uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what the future kind of holds here at uh, state level where we're doing a lot of really, really neat things. Uh, going to walk through our 2022 panel lineup. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about what is going to be, uh, I'll call it in our shop for 2022. What are the standard configurations, what we've changed, what we've improved. Really, it's, I'd say, taking a lot of the feedback from the market, what we sold and doing more of that, right? So continuing to leverage our strengths in that in that regard. So uh, gonna talk about that and that should wrap it up. So it should be a pretty good video, pretty fun video. Uh, we hope uh, you're excited to, to hear more about the studio, what we've done, the investments we've made and, and where, uh, where we're gonna continue to keep going. So thanks for tuning in. Slavic Studio is all about just being the, the best film studio that, that we can we can have here. It's gonna be from the, the best cameras, the best lighting. I know there's so many comments on how poor my lighting was forever. I think we finally fixed it. So we've got uh, a, a lot of, of lighting here. Uh, best cameras, best lighting, best environment. You know, we're using uh, media mods, things like that on GoPros to get the, the best audio clarity. Hopefully it feels like I'm not shouting in the video. Uh, we'll, we'll see how well we can edit it, edit it out, right, the, the audio and get those levels dialed in. But, uh, you know, really th this is going to be all about, as we continue to grow in 2022, taking products, new products, product demos, new panels with different configurations, really just continuing to keep showing uh, and exercising what, what we do best, which is all about panels. And so here within the Slavic Studio, uh, you see here our, our propeller. This is a propeller from my best friend, uh, James, and he, he got this from actually uh, Aero Deco Canada is what it is. And it's uh, Antoine at Aero Deco Canada. And he's actually an engineering 
a maintenance technician in, uh, in, air, in air, airplanes. And he actually finishes these propellers and sells them and actually helps pay for some of his training. So if you haven't checked out AeroDeco uh, up in Canada, I believe uh, Montreal area, but give Antoine a shout out. He's, uh, he's a great guy, absolutely amazing product. Thank you again, James, for that. Uh, really excited to have that. Uh, so here we've got a monoprice sit-stand desk. So really, really nice to be able to adjust your desk height uh, up and down. If you're sitting here in, in the simulator environment, you can just go up and down, which is really, really convenient. So that's, that's quite nice. Uh, once again, we've got, we've got our full computer here, uh, gaming rig all set up. So that'll be great for doing our product demos, getting the best frames per second that we can in the videos to bring you guys the best content, whether it's coming from Microsoft Flight Sim, X-Plane, or Prepared. We've got our, our Grid Studio iPhones uh, over there. So if you haven't checked out Grid Studio, uh, coupon code SLAVIX, that'll get you some savings here for, for the next couple months. I'll post that in the link in the description below. But these are actually iPhones. We've got a 4S, 5, we've got a 6. Uh, they, they actually deconstruct the iPhones and they actually kind of glue everything back in, into place here and give a diagram and a description of, of all these different iPhones. And really their, their mission is to kind of preserve the legacy of, of what the iPhone is and what it came. And, and it's just very unique. They actually have uh, iPhone 1s, the iPhone 10s. Uh, so they, they've got a whole variety of iPhones. But uh, it, I, I could just look at the, I don't know if anything anybody else is like in Apple stuff. Like I'm really into this stuff. I could just look at it and study it and, and put my mind in the head of being an engineer at Apple and knowing that every single square millimeter on that phone is so incredibly important in the design process. And, and because every square millimeter that's used on, on CPU space or memory space could be devoted to the battery, right? And getting better battery life or, you know, maybe a little bit bigger camera lens. And it's just, it's unbelievable to think we have these, these devices in our pocket that connect us to the world. And you maybe even be watching this video on one. Uh, but it, it's really just kind of mesmerizing, looking at them and thinking, kind of going back in time and looking at that. So those are Grid Studio uh, iPhones uh, there. Got our prop and we got our high pressure aviation map here. This is from Hugo. So high pressure aviation, they do a cool map that actually has all the like international uh, airports on it. So literally like all the airports in the world. They got highest traffic, longest runway, highest altitude, dangerous, and uh, most beautiful approaches. So Hugo flies triple sevens. And, uh, and so he's, he's seen a lot of these, these destinations. And so anyways, he, he made this, this map here. And you can get this map online at uh, high pressure aviation. Really cool, I'll put a link in the description too. So that's the studio. Uh, we'll get going next with some modular panel videos. So I wanna show off a few modular panels that we've done recently. Uh, what's you know, changed about them, what's different about them, what's the same. Uh, so we'll talk about that next and uh, go from there. All right, so kicking off, we have a fully modular panel. And when I say fully modular, really referring to the area above the yoke cutout to the top of the panel. And so that fully modular setup here is actually gonna end up being a couple of combinations for the customer. One is a glass cockpit, which is gonna be uh, powered by the Rielsen Gear G1000. And the second is gonna be a setup that uses a touchscreen monitor, a Knobster, the software powering that is actually called Air Manager. And then it's gonna have a suite of different real sim gear avionics that are complementary of a steam gauge, right? So a real sim gear GMA 350 audio panel, a, a 530, a 430, and uh, an autopilot and things like that. Here, you can kind of see this bottom half of the panel. That's all fixed, right? So that's gonna remain the same. Uh, here we have for a virtual fly Yoko cutout. Uh, here is going to be for our pedestal mounting system, which I'll show you a couple of different examples of that. And then uh, this cutout here is actually for the real sim gear switch panel. So once again, that will remain consistent throughout the overall process. So starting with our pedestal mounting system, once again, this here will mount. And, uh, and this is actually for the Vernio. This is a Virtual Fly Vernio Plus uh, TPM, right? And so that'll just mount just sit very simply like that. Vernio will mount there. Uh, we're also giving the customer the flexibility to run, if they'd like, the TQ6 throttle as well through an additional pedestal. So all they have to do is just unclamp that pedestal and clamp a new one on, they can run the TQ6 also. So uh, give it a little bit of flexibility, flexibility there. 
uh, in terms of the panel. In terms of the actual cutouts themselves, I want to walk through both of those uh, here. As I mentioned, this uh, is a 17-inch touch-enabled monitor. Got it off Amazon. Uh, but this 17-inch monitor is going to be what I would say the largest size monitor that we will really support. And the reason for that is because it's, it's thin profile. We actually CNC machine all of the monitor mounts specific to the monitor sizes themselves. And that's the thickness, the size, and everything else. That 17-inch monitor will ultimately sit here in the steam gauge setup. There'll be a Knobster, and there'll be other avionics there. Uh, so we support a 13-inch, a 15-inch, and a 17-inch size. Uh, and predominantly, we, uh, if you'd like a fixed non-modular setup, you know, we do that through our, our steam gauge as well as our touch, touch monitors. And you'll see a, a 22 product uh, overview series that'll have more specifics around that. So just looking at the, the modular plates real quick. So as I mentioned, we have a couple of them. These here are, are our, uh, our brackets for the monitor. So those look uh, real sharp. They even say stay level on the back, which is kind of cool. Uh, but basically, this here is the glass, the glass setup, right? And so we give all the hardware to mount this glass setup with the, the bolts and hardware from the, the actual uh, modular plate itself to the actual the panel here. And so you can kind of see all of this lines up really, really nice, just like that. And so it'll be able to run a Wilson Gear G1000. And, uh, and then the next combination here, which I'll show you, is going to be for the steam gauge setup. And that setup looks just like this. And so once again, this combination is, is uh, using that 17 inch touch monitor here on the left side. It's going to use a, a Knobster here from Sim Innovations for the air manager. GMA350, GNS530, GFC500 autopilot, all from Realson Gear, and then a GTN750 from Realson Gear as well. Uh, GTN750 is nice because it gives you transponder capability. So if you're doing anything in Pilot Edge and they tell you to squawk a certain code in ATC, you can actually do that with the 750, which is kind of, slar, uh, kind of sharp, uh, kind of slick. So yeah, that, that's it, right? Pretty simple modular setup. Uh, we've been doing these modular plates for quite a while. Uh, they work well. You know, they really give customers flexibility in what they may want to change or do in the future, whether they want to upgrade. Maybe they're training in multiple different aircraft. Uh, maybe one's got a 430 and a 530. The other one's got a 650 and a 750. They can kind of have some flexibility to go between the two. So uh, that's pretty much, uh, you know, first example of some modular uh, plates here. I'll give you another example on another panel here as well. Uh, so you can see that kind of compare and contrast the, the different sides. This is obviously a very large panel due to the 17 inch monitor. Uh, and so as you get down to a smaller monitor size, you don't have as large of a panel as well. So um, yeah, I'll give you guys that example here and then uh, we'll wrap this one up. All right, so this, this here is a panel for a customer. Uh, it's a Yoko uh, panel. It's also got compatibility for the real Gear G1000. It has all of our standard features such as all our, uh, our powder coating. Leather record, leather wrapped glare shield with edge trim molding, as well as our RAM mount here. So uh, this specific panel, like I mentioned, real some Gucci 1000 up here, Yoko for the yoke, and then here is our pedestal mounting system, and you can have either the Vernio or the TQ6, uh, kind of depending on which pedestal you'd like, or which you know hardware throttle you'd like, and then we design the pedestal around that. But this bottom right section here, this is what I want to talk about. So this here, this bottom right section is for a modular plate. In this example, the modular plate that the customer has gone forward with, it actually looks like this. And so this modular plate could be removed and we could actually build a new modular plate should they want something a, a little bit different design. This one here, it's gonna work for two Realson Gear uh, G5s, a desktopaviator.com switch panel, and then a desktopaviator.com flap lever. And this will just go ahead and mount right into that area, just as simple as that. Here is another panel demo. Uh, this is a modular panel as well. And this one's a little bit different, right? It has the same Yoko cutoff for the yoke, uh, same fur pedestal mounting system, can do either TQ6 or the Vernio. Uh, same bottom right corner, having that modular plate set up for the switch panel area. 
And uh, once again, that's giving the optionality to use either the Logitech switch panel and desktop aviator flap lever there, or using something like this modular plate and having it for the real sim gear switch panel. Once again, uh, a couple different options there depending on uh, what switch panel and components you want for down that area. That real sim gear switch panel is nice though, it is backlit, uh, which, is, which is a nice, nice touch to it. Um, here, we talk about the primary and secondary avionics. So let's actually start with the primary avionics. And the primary avionics here, uh, this is gonna be a 13.3 inch monitor, touch monitor, that's actually gonna sit behind the panel. And then it's gonna have our five axis CNC milled monitor uh, brackets. So we mill all these custom to each monitor. Uh, we have three monitor configurations, 13 inch, 15 inch, and 17 inch and they're all milled exactly to the, the correct thicknesses of those monitors. Uh, they, they plug in, you know, they need power via like USB-C and a power adapter, then they need a, uh, an HDMI connection, and then you actually use it with a software called Air Manager, is how this customer will use it. They'll pair that Air Manager with something called the Knobster here. So uh, there's a lot of videos on the Knobster, really cool product, uh, comes from some innovations. Uh, Russ Barlow's got a lot of content around uh, the some innovations Knobster, but definitely, uh, so if you check that out, it's, it's handy. Basically, you touch on the touch screen and then you spin the, the rotary dial, kind of what you want. Uh, so you could have like an HSI right here in a steam gauge setup. You could touch it and then you can actually spin it and things like that. So kind of cool. The knobs are gonna mount right there. And then the secondary avionics uh, here, uh, once again, avionics coming from Real Sim Gear, but this will be a modular plate that mounts right here like so. And they'll just put the bolts in from the front, wing nuts on the back for easy removal down the road. This set of avionics, Real Sim Gear GMA 350, uh, Real Sim Gear GNS 530 Navigator, and then down here is actually for a GFC 700 Autopilot. So, uh, slick setup here, gives them some functionality down the road, should they wanna change like a GTN 650, GTN 750, something like that, they can uh, make those changes. So, I'll show you uh, one more modular panel example, then we'll get into some of our 2022 uh, product lineup. All right, so this is the last modular panel example I wanted to share with you. This is a little bit different setup. This is actually a Honeycomb Alpha, Honeycomb Bravo setup uh, versus the Virtual Fly Yoko that you just saw. Once again, using the 13 inch touch monitor in this example and using the Knobster as well. So once again, that 13 inch touch monitor will actually mount right back here behind the panel. And then here's actually some examples of our five axis milled CNC brackets. So you can see here it's a stay level, really nice. And uh, these, these, are, these are just, they, they, they machine really, really well and they just look great. So, uh, so here's, here's some examples of those. But basically, uh, you know, once again, we, we give the, the brackets for all these thicknesses and, and we do all the legwork for you so you don't think about it. But basically, you know, bolts through the front, wing nuts here on the back and they'll just mount like that. It's really, really nice. Uh, so the monitor there, uh, once again, that Napster going right there, or rather, it looks like this. So Napster's nice, once again, it's got USB-C uh, to connect, and then we give a nice little grommet uh, to clean up that hole and make it so the cable doesn't, uh, doesn't kind of uh, catch on there or anything. And then we've got an area for the modular plates. We have two modular plates in this example. Modular plate number one, See here. So this modular plate, two G5, real some gear, and then real some gear GTN 750. And that'll just mount just like that. All right, so GTN 750 is a really nice component because it has transponder and navigation and audio built into it. So you can change frequency, you can change transponder as well. So if you're in like Pilot Edge or Batsim and they ask you to uh, squawk circuit code and everything, you can actually type that in on the 750. So that's actually a nice piece about the 750. It does a lot of functionality. Uh, and then the other plate that we have here is a GMA 350 from Real Sim Gear. So that's that audio controller. We can switch between COM1, COM2, uh, two Real Sim Gear G5s, and then a Real Sim Gear GNS 430. So that's more just the nav communicator there. So once again, on, on this setup, ideally, how you would change your squat code 
would be actually through Air Manager and touching in that touch screen and actually being able to, to type in uh, something there on, on your actual transponder, what I'll call kind of touch transponder gauge that you create and configure in Air Manager. That's how you'd actually change your squat code, if not using that 750 plate. Uh, so once again, Air Manager is full featured. I'm not gonna go down a whole whole thing of, of Air Manager and what it is. You can check that out. We got a lot of videos on it, but, but that's, a, uh, that's another, Setup once again comes with all of our, our great panel features, leather wrapped glare, glare shield, LED lighting underneath, powder coated finish. Uh, this is our gunmetal color once again, and it's got the RAM mount for all that four flight work that you wanna do with your iPad mini. So uh, really, really neat, uh, another panel. Next I'm gonna talk a little bit about our 2022 product lineup, what that means, the overview of the product lineup for 22, and, uh, and then hopefully that answers any questions that you guys have. So, all right, on the 2022 product lineup. Talk about our 2022 lineup. Uh, we've got three main product categories. They are the glass cockpit, which is a G1000 based system, the steam gauge system, and then the third is actually the touch based system. We also have additional products such as like our touch bracket, that's a very popular product, our compass mount, our leg, uh, shelf legs, and, and other you know kind of accessories and things like that. But from a panel perspective, those are the three main products. I'm gonna show you those three main products in honeycomb configurations. That's with honeycomb alpha, honeycomb bravo, compatibility. We can make all of these panels with virtual fly Yoko and TQ6 or Vernio, uh, basically throttle support as well. So all of those configurations are completely available as, as stock panels. And I'm gonna walk you through each of the three different ones. I'm gonna start off with a glass cockpit here first. All right, so starting off with our glass cockpit, uh, this here is an example of a real sim gear g1000 glass cockpit compatible with the honeycomb alpha honeycomb bravo uh, also very 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 popular is the simionic g1000 as well the simionic g1000 uses ipads instead of actual display screens to connect to the simulator it actually transmits all the data over a wireless bridge and it gives you the flexibility to actually run a lot of different aircraft in the simulator uh, versus just a aircraft that is uh, what i'll call predominantly based with the G1000 in the simulator itself, right? So for example, in Microsoft Flight Sim, you got like the Grand Caravan, I think they're the Beach Baron, uh, like G58 or whatever, then the Cessna 172, those all have a G1000 system in them. So you can fly them all in like a real sim gear G1000 configuration because the G1000 is actually in the simulator itself, all the software, all the, the coding behind that. And these are, are merely displays showing the G1000. Now, when you look at the Simeonic solution, uh, and once again, we got that G1000 comparison video, but when in the Simeonic solution, I can go hop in a 747 and I can still see all my telemetry data, airspeed, altitude, VSI, in a G1000 look and feel view. I can dial up an approach, a SID, a star, anything, in the G1000 itself and it'll hand off to the plane in the simulator. So what it allows me to do, and we'll have a video of this coming, but it basically allows me to fly a Citation CJ4 in the sim. And so, you know, it's basically a fast moving airplane, not a slow moving airplane. Use a G1000, stay proficient with the G1000, but in that actual plane itself, it doesn't have a G1000 in Microsoft Flight Sim. So it allows me to still stay fresh with the G1000 while not, uh, while not flying a G1000. So that's why, you know, the G1000 setup, which system you go with, whether it be real sim gear, Aviatech, Simeonic, or the Virtual Fly VF-1000, it's really important to take into those considerations which G1000 system works best. You know, Real Sim Gear, clearly the most affordable system out there for sure. Uh, they've added a ton of great features to it, backlighting uh, and different things like that. Uh, you know, Virtual Fly, they've come out with their recent called the Hub software, which it integrates all their different hardware into one very easy to use package suite. Uh, and then the Aviatech G1000, hands down, um, you know, it is the most expensive G1000 out there, but it's the highest quality G1000 out of all of them combined. Uh, and so you got a lot of different options out there in the marketplace for what you want. But this is an example of our glass cockpit. Once again, all different configurations, different cutouts, different setups. So think about which G1000 you want, and then uh, you can go ahead and, and order those. Uh, once again, this is the honeycomb setup, can also work with the virtual fly setup. Uh, it's a different panel, different configuration, different cutouts, uh, but we support it as well. All right, so next panel that uh, we've got in the lineup for 2022 is gonna be our steam gauge panel. This here is a uh, really nice panel. Once again, all same features, RAM mount, under, uh, under lighting with the LED, 
lighting with the remote on the back. Uh, where's the remote? Here we go. This is where the remote is here. Uh, so nice remote control. You can change the color. You can change the brightness, things like that. Uh, but we've got the, the LED lighting strip. Uh, leather wrapped glare shield here up top. Nice edge trim molding. Uh, this here, as you've watched in the video previously, you've learned that monitors are becoming very, very popular. So in the steam gauge configuration, we're gonna have three monitor setups. Uh, it's gonna be the 13 inch. Uh, we got basically uh, small, medium, large, 13 inch, 15 inch, 17 inch, simple as that. Uh, so this here is the 13 inch configuration. The 13 inch configuration is nice because it keeps the overall panel height down. Uh, as you get higher towards the 15 inch and 17 inch configurations, uh, they get a little bit wider and then also taller too. So that, that height is always very, very important. But once again, here in the steam gauge configuration, you're gonna get our, our awesome five axis CNC milled mounts. And, uh, and this one, for, as I mentioned, is, is compatible with the 13 inch monitor. So you're gonna take your 13 inch monitor, it's gonna mount behind the back. We give you all the hardware to mount everything. Uh, and then because it uses a touchscreen monitor, you're gonna actually, hopefully don't destroy this monitor in the process. <laughs> Uh, because I use the touchscreen monitor, you can use a Knobster with it. So previously, we used to do iPads in these panels for the steam gauge. We can do iPads if you really, really want an iPad and you want to use something like uh, Remote Flight Cockpit HD or, or something else to, to manage the iPad. But it really seems like the iPad support is sort of starting to phase out and the monitor support, just because the monitors are way more readily available on Amazon and other outlets, the monitors seem to be way more popular. So that's our the monitors. Uh, the you know avionics once again this is Rosen Gear GMA 350, Rosen Gear GNS 530, uh, and then Rosen Gear GFC 500 autopilot. And then here we have an area for two Logitech uh, panels. One for your radio panel to pick up your Nav 2 and COM 2 because your 530 is going to manage COM 1 and Nav 1. And then this one here is set so you can use either ADF or you can also adjust transponder as well with it. So once again, back in the video, we talked about that GTN 750 and that modular plate being able to adjust transponder. Well, in this setup, you wouldn't be able to adjust transponder. You'd be able to do it either one on a Logitech radio panel by switching down to transponder and adjusting it, or you could once again use that touch screen, have a transponder in a little section of that, that air manager setup and be able to adjust transponder that way by just touching, spinning a dial, or just by touching and keying in the numbers themselves. So that's, uh, that's how you get a full featured setup. Uh, once again, you know, it's got the, the Rusting Gear GMA350 audio panel. So when you're in the sim and you're you know, sitting on the ground and you want to pick up your ATIS, you can just push COM2 right there on the audio panel versus going into the sim, trying to look down, move the mouse around and finding COM2 button and pushing COM2. I always run my, my frequencies as ground and tower on COM1. ATIS is pretty much always COM2. Uh, and then I just, I'm always, you know, pretty much talking on COM1. I don't know. A lot of people have different ways they, they manage their frequencies in the plane, but that's how I do mine. So anyways, that's the steam gauge setup. Uh, next, I'm going to show you the touch setup. Touch setup is kind of similar, more closely related to the steam setup versus the, the glass cockpit. But next, we're going to show you the touch setup. And here is the touch uh, setup. So once again, we have three sizes of touch monitors. We have the small, medium, large, 13, 15, 17. Here, once again, is a picture of the 13 inch. So our touch panel, it uses two touch screen monitors and one knobster. And, uh, and so that knobster, we go right here in the middle. We put a nice little grommet there, right, right there. Uh, and then you just pick up your two monitors. And you have monitor one here, for example, and then monitor two. We've got some examples of this online. I'll, I'll post some pictures up here in the video of how you did the cable management. Cust Customers did a phenomenal job of cable management, by the way. It took a little bit of time, but if you, if you really give the time and dedication into it, you can get really clean cable management. Uh, we, we do have a comparison shot in the Slavic shop around how these all kind of go together. So you can see the 15 and 17, how close they are together and how the 13 is a little bit smaller. Once again, I really personally like the 13 inch size because it, it keeps the height down. It keeps the overall panel compact and, and small versus the bigger sizes like the 15 and 17, it can get very, very tall. So uh, here is, here is once again, Honeycomb Alpha, Honeycomb Bravo. We can do these for the Yoko, TQ6, switch panel, kind of whatever you want to do. And, uh, and this here uh, is once again, for, for the monitors, 
You get your two sets in this example, two sets of your five axis CNC milled mounts. Uh, you get a couple monitors. The monitors that we support are linked in the actual page description themselves. And then you have the Nopster. So both of these would use Air Manager. So instead of actually having those physical real sim gear avionics, the 750, 530, 350, et cetera, you'd have that all digitally on another monitor here. And then you can actually touch the monitor and, and input things on Air Manager. So this is, this is really a great product for those that are migrating from the touch bracket that we sell and they want the full-fledged touch experience and they still want to be able to use their Honeycomb Alpha and Bravo, uh, but they just want to upgrade their whole experience to just being something really, really comprehensive. And also everything tied together as one unit, right? So you can pick this up off your desk, you can move it elsewhere onto a, a table or somewhere else, you know, maybe off your desk and become a little bit more portable with it if you get everything hooked up from a USB hub perspective on the back and just connect these things to the monitors, you can effectively have like one power connection into power to power this whole thing up and then like one USB connection in your computer. So with some really, you know, call, um, call it nifty cable management, you get a really clean setup, really great setup and uh, and very portable setup too with the panel. So that's our touch panel. Uh, that's the overview on that. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead Gonna wrap it up, talk a little bit about 2022, kind of what that means. All right, so talking a little bit about 2022, what the future holds, as you saw, you know, our, our 22 panel lineup, uh, really excited around that. But, you know, as we look forward in the next few months, February, March, we're gonna be coming out with the, the most comprehensive, coolest product that we've ever come out with ever since inception of the company. And to be completely honest, it's gonna revolutionize the entire flight simulation industry in the comfort of your own home. For those who want the highest quality switches, the highest quality dials, uh, an expanded primary flight display system, more flexibility with, with radios. And they're gonna be modeled from a software perspective that is very, very simple very easy to use and one central location for all the configuration. And it's gonna actually be configured and work with all three major flight simulation platforms. Those include Microsoft Flight Sim, Prepared, and X-Plane. It's, uh, like I said, it's, it's gonna be the, the coolest product we've ever come out with. I don't wanna oversell it or anything or get too excited around it, uh, but we, we will be we coming out with that. I'll, I'll give you a, a little hint, it's, it's two powerhouse, high quality companies coming together and have collaborated for the better part of a few years in coming up with all these products. So that's gonna be coming in February and March. We're really, really excited about what that means for the community, for home builders, for enthusiasts, for people who want to have us build their panels for them and the customization elements, they just continue to keep getting greater and greater and greater. Uh, so that's gonna be coming uh, in call February or March. Uh, I'm excited to continue to engage in more partnerships across the community, bring more compatibility for more avionics, more components uh, to the community for you know others to really experience the, the most, uh, I'll call it, elevated premium experience you can in flight simulation in the comfort of your own home, right? The whole goal is to maintain proficiency, to be practicing for a flight, to be very familiar with your uh, SIDS, right? Your standard instrument departures. Uh, I'm looking forward to continuing my flight training uh, and progressing towards my next ratings. And that's going to be really exciting uh, to continue to keep doing that. You know, I always tell uh, my wife, I'm, I'm the most calm when I'm flying an airplane and I don't know. That's just some people are like what? There's many things going on. It's like well, yeah, there are, but uh, but managed appropriately, it's 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 quite relaxing. So so that's uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to continuing uh, my ratings and uh, and learning more. Right? Uh, you hear the the quotes all the time. You know, where our pilots always learning, always learning something new, yada yada. But but truly, it, it's. Uh, you know, I, I never want my, my brain to become stale, right? I always want to keep progressing and keep going and, and keep pushing it. And so I'm excited to continue my ratings and, and what that means ultimately for, for me to continue on in this, this fun aviation journey that we're on. So uh, once again, thank you for, for all the business for the last few years. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for all the emails. Thank you for the, 
those of you who do watch the videos, um, I'll open up the comment section actually. Why don't you throw some comments in there if you want? Uh, you know, I, I hope the lighting's good. Maybe, maybe we can get a, a positive on the lighting, but uh, you know, that's, that, that's about it. You know, for now I'm looking forward to Oshkosh, um, many more partnerships and uh, hopefully maybe get up to, to Alaska here this year as well, do some more flying up there uh, with, with Chris. If, if you had an opportunity to check uh, Chris out, Angle of Attack, awesome videos. That was sweet. That's a real downfield confined takeoff, man. That was awesome. He's actually flying his, or releasing the video segment of him flying from Alaska to Oshkosh uh, across Canada in his 172 to have his panel upgraded over at New View Technologies in, in Oshkosh. And they're an awesome partner and Jessica is great over there. Uh, but definitely check them out. Uh, check, out check out Chris's videos. He, he did a, a, about three weeks ago, did an absolutely epic intro and just totally nailed it. Uh, it was really cool. So I'll put a link to that. That little, the first 20 seconds of that video were just totally spot on. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we're looking forward to in 2022. Uh, wishing y'all a, a safe 22, healthy, hopefully, uh, you know, we can pass all this, this COVID stuff and, uh, and you know, we, we get back to more in person and social and things like that and don't have to wear masks everywhere. But uh, yeah, just wishing everybody healthy, stay safe. And uh, we'll, we'll be here and continue to keep uh, pushing the envelope in, in flight simulation. And I'm looking forward to, to demoing more things for you and more panel configurations. So have a great rest of your day. We'll see you.